Hi everyone, I'm going to present today about Daniel Bernboy and he is a really wonderful pianist and a very crucial pianist uh, in the in the current century. Uh, Daniel Bernboy was born as an only child in Arias, Argentina. He was born from Russian Jewish immigrants family and uh, he was born on November 15, 1942. He is currently now 77 years old and is currently a pianist, a solo pianist and a conductor at the Berlin State Opera and also the Stakas Spell Berlin. He is now currently more of a conductor over there. However, um, the Stakas Berlin is a very important um, orchestra because it's one of the oldest orchestras in Europe and it was first created as like a orchestra for the royal family and then later later it just continued. Uh, this orchestra was first documented in 1570 and there are a lot of really impressive conductors such as Richard Strauss, and now we have Felix Mendelssohn, Georg Kamo, Maya Beer, just to name a few of core conductors. And from the start of uh, Bern Boyne's career, he started studying piano with his father, and then he started performing at the age of seven. And uh, he studied most of his piano from his father and uh, started starting going to I uh, started studying with Igor Markovich with conducting at 1949 and then later he started studying piano with Edwin Fisher in 1952 and at this point uh, Daniel Barnborn has moved from Argentina all the way to Israel which he spent the rest of his life, most of his, most of his life, his life growing up there, but then he just toured to Europe with uh, Edwin Fisher in 1952, and he also received a scholarship to study of uh, Nadia Bollinger, and in 1955, during this point he was studying at the Academia di Santa Cecilia in Rome. And he managed to graduate with the youngest graduate of that program during that time. And by the age of 13, he debuted in the London at the Royal Festival Hall. And he played the Mozart Piano Concerto in A major. And he played with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and with Joseph Cripps, which is a really uh, wide worldwide known violinist, Austrian violinist, and the World Festival Hall is a pretty big deal because the Festival Hall is one of the first post-war buildings to be uh, kept and also to be renovated and engineered so that the acoustics in the hall are 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 like really great. So. The next year, he debuted in America at the Carnegie Hall in 1957. He performed the Prokofiev's Piano Concerto No. 1, and then he played with the Symphony of the Air, which is a like a branch from the New York uh, Philharmonic Orchestra, but they just have the best players pulled out and then just play by, by themselves. And also he played with Leopold. Stokowski and by the age of 17 he started touring and then he had a contract agent with through Arthur Rubinstein and an interesting thing about Daniel Barnboy and Arthur Rubinstein is that they're really good friends and then it is said on a cigar website that Arthur Rubinstein is the one that introduced Daniel Bernborn to smoking, and then he's been an avid smoker since he was the age of 14. 
and later uh, as he tours around the world uh, he also started conducting it started in uh, Paris where he conducted for the orchestra and then and then eventually by 1992 he got the conductor for life at the Stackhouse of Berlin and one one thing I thought was really cool was that he turned down the New York Philharmonic's director position in 2006, uh, mostly due to his passion to stay in Berlin for for his own ideals. But it's just such a big title, and I wouldn't imagine anyone turning down but him. Yeah. So another thing about Daniel Durham. Barenboim is that he has a lot of personal views. He was very active aside from his performing piano and conducting career. He supported a lot of uh, human rights, including uh, Palestinian rights. And then he also um, is a really critic advocate for Israel's government and over the occupation of Palestinian territory. And then he's also quite known to do things that he just wants to do. Um, he has once performed in front of Israeli troops in the front lines to boost morale. And he, during the Gulf War, he performed at the orchestra with gas max. So, a very intense guy. And Baron Boehm, aside from being a full-time uh, piano performer, he also recorded a lot during his uh, early years and after years. He is most noted for his interpretation of Beethoven, where he played all the piano sonatas and concertos of Beethoven throughout, uh, throughout multiple cycles. And one of his most noted works is the Pathetique from yeah. Beethoven's Sonata Number Eight, Opus Thirteen. Baron Boy also favors a lot of Mozart, Bach, and Liszt, and his style could be said as individ individualistic and very similar to the pianist in the old times. He's also very impository, impulsive, and full of extreme contrast, and just the sound quality is very pictorial and he's also been mentioned that he's very coloristic in his approach to music and uh, with with all these recordings and all these performances it really affects uh, a lot of the younger generation of pianists because because it's just very impressive to hear and also he's um, he, he, he kind of shows that you can be a full-time pianist and still be able to record a ton, which is a lot. And you're also, um, you're also able to just continue with your passion. And uh, for his recordings, uh, he began at the start of the classical era and later and then did romantic era as well and then his of course most notable recordings are the Mozart, Beethoven and then he's also got the Schubert piano sonata and he also recorded all the cycles of the Beethoven and Mozart piano concertos. For his romantic period he recorded the Brahms piano concerto the Mendelssohn Song Without Words, the Chopin Nocturnes, the chamber works of Mozart, Brahms, Beethoven, and Brahms. And he recorded chamber works was because he married a really well-known cellist and then he did a lot of chamber works with his wife then. And during the latter years, after 1990, he expanded his repertoire by performing Baroque and 20th century composers. And he perf he recorded the J.S. Bach, the Well-Tempered Clavier, the Goldberg Variations, 
and in the 20th century he recorded the outbinds Iberia and the Debussy Preludes. And uh, one interesting thing about his Beethoven recordings is that he recorded throughout the world. He recorded in the US and then when he was touring he recorded in London and then when he was touring he recorded in I think it was France but in total he recorded in six different countries to piece together the uh the Beethoven the Beethoven recordings and it's just really crazy because not a lot of uh performers are willing to record at different parts of the world they would tour and they'll stop and then they'll record and on the picture over here it shows a list of Brian Boyne's recordings with the gramophone studio and this is just a, a solo recording that they compiled with the studio for his 75th birthday and you can buy this on Amazon for $33 if you're interested. Alright, and this is my last slide and I will end this with my presentation. Thank you.